Ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an exclusive Slam Show interview. I'm your host and Mixmaster Slam and Sam. Thank you so much for joining. And with me today here in Las Vegas is another Las Vegas transplant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it up to the one and only Trenier, everyone. Woo! What's up, everybody? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. You are a blessing to have here in studio. Uh, what a way to kick off the new year, too. Yeah. Although we're in March. The new year. <laughs> I was just going to ask you. <laughs> we're, we're still on the first quarter. How's that? It's still the new year for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, yes, it is uh, an honor again to have you hang out with us. Uh, let's get right into it. Okay. Uh, you moved here from Vegas how long ago? Um, in July. I moved here in July. So it's yeah, big. when it was super hot, like 120 <laughs> degrees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what made you want to make the move? Well, I lived in a beautiful community, right? Mm -hmm. A beach community. Mm -hmm. But um, I just made the move. I just made the move for other business reasons. Mm -hmm. There's some things I got, you know, brewing, which I don't really want to talk about too much. But um, my mother, I needed to move my mom. Okay. Because she wouldn't move to California. And um, also the price, you know, of, of the homes here, mm -hmm. amazing. So, yeah, there are some things I, I'm looking uh, to do here. That's, so all? that's all I'm going to say about that. There you go. There you go, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. She has a lot of stuff brewing. And obviously, you're an entrepreneur in your own uh, way that you want to yeah. be able to have businesses and stuff like that. Yeah, and some other things uh, going because the real estate is really good here. And um, also musically, there's something I'm doing here musically. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to give away everything, you know. Ooh. I like to keep some things to myself mm -hmm. until it manifests. Exactly, so. exactly. <laughs> That's the key word, ladies and gentlemen, manifesting. Yes, and but trust and believe some good things are happening. It's weird because, like I was talking to you earlier, I've done remixes and productions for all sorts of freestyle artists, mm -hmm. and I have not yet touched your... You have not. I have I not. I wonder why. I <laughs> Uh, we're going to get that taken care of <laughs> after the show. Ladies and gentlemen, you will, you will hear a Slam and Sam production remix with Trainier in the near future. I'll make certain of that. So yeah. uh, <laughs> I saw Stevie's interview. I saw you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. I saw that interview. I was like, oh, OK. Yeah. You're like, OK, if Stevie's going to do it, I guess it's OK to go. To yeah, Slam exactly. To you. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? Uh, kind of like cosign. <laughs> oh, he, if Stevie's doing it, it's safe to go to the Slam exactly. and Sam's place. Exactly, yes. It's, yes, that's true. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Love that's you, Stevie my buddy. B. Yeah. And he was actually living here for several years. You know that. Yeah, yeah. he still he still does because his kids. I just honest, oh. I just spoke with him this morning. Oh, he, is he still here? Yeah. And Did he's you, here today, actually. Really? Yeah. Because, you know, he has a home here for his kids. Oh. And so when he comes here to do shows, oh. he still stays um, in that home. Yeah. And he, of course, lives in Brazil. Yeah. 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 I thought he, like, fully moved out of no, Vegas. No, no. His children, they're still here. Okay, because I've been trying to text him. He doesn't return my texts anymore. Stevie, what's going on? Maybe that was during the pandemic days. No. Yeah, <laughs> maybe pandemic. You have to hit him up on WhatsApp. Yeah. Okay, WhatsApp. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. I got to re-download that. That's for sure. So big shout out to everyone that's in the chat. Uh, towards the end of the program, we're going to have uh, the viewers uh, have an opportunity to ask questions for you, that's Trineer. Right. Uh, yeah. But before we get into that, we're going to go into a few things in terms of the singing uh, prowess that you're able to attain throughout the years. Uh, let's talk about like when you were a kid. Uh-oh. How yeah. did you... What was the, the main, like, source of inspiration in terms of being able to say, I want to get into singing and, and dabble into that? Well, I think my first influence, well, I know my first influence was Michael Jackson. Um, yeah, I grew up on Michael. I was, like, maybe four, four years old. Mm -hmm. And my mom took me to my first concert, loved him, four or, four or five and um, that was just it for me when I saw Michael Jackson and I felt like he was my first boyfriend. <laughs> oh, my God. The cowboy hat that he used to wear. And I, I tried to imitate him. I used to sing all of his songs. 
as a young girl. That was my first influence. It was Michael. And what um, song in particular? Um, Gotta be there and um, oh, so you're oh talking God. about Jackson Five, Michael? Yeah, yeah, no, Jackson Five Days. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. gotcha. That's that that's was awesome. uh, yeah, he was my inspiration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. And as far as female inspiration, oh, a lot. I have too many. <laughs> I had so many. Um, I could just name. It was definitely um, Natalie Cole, Ooh. Diana Ross, Tina Marie. Mm -hmm. um, there's an artist by the name of Phyllis Hyman. Yes. I was more like into, I really loved like the jazz influence. And then I got into the Donna Summer. Um, then as I got older, I loved Madonna's. I just had a variety mm -hmm. of singers that pretty much influenced me. And I like to say they, they trained me as well, mm -hmm. you know, because I would listen and really study um, their techniques and try to imitate mm -hmm. them just to, you know, pick a little bit from this artist, from that artist. And, uh, yeah, that's what I did. Um, those are the artists that I absolutely loved. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as singing, did you have any professional training? Of choir? course. Okay, yeah. go into that. <laughs> Church? Well, yeah, but I would say, I mean, I was raised in the church, and I did, used to sing in, in many choirs, but my formal training, when I was a little girl, my dad always had me in everything. Like, I, I took guitar lessons, dance lessons, uh, piano. I was great at piano. I used to win piano recitals. I used to play the guitar, everything. I did everything to uh, prepare myself, ballet, tap you know, um, voice lessons. Mm -hmm. And then when I graduated from college, I went to the University of Miami Music School and I majored in theater and studio music and jazz because I really wanted to get into the jazz. I used to listen to Al Jarose and uh, Phyllis Hyman mm -hmm. and the Vita Bakers mm -hmm. and just so many different styles. But um, I really wanted to do jazz. Yeah. And... So I went to, I had a scholarship at the university. Mm -hmm. I studied classical music. My mother wanted me to do uh, classical because my mom's a classical singer. Whoa. So That's um, where it came from. Yeah. And um, my voice teacher, Miss Stanford, at the Carolyn Stanford, mm -hmm. amazing woman, at the University of Miami, she was over the vocal department. And she really wanted me to go into classical. So I used to sing all the Italian arias. And, um, yeah, I was going to go into that field, but I'd switched. I got into a band mm -hmm. when I was in college and mm -hmm. just started doing like the local, um, uh, what do you call them? Clubs now, like what in Coconut Grove with a group by the name of Euphoria. I was the lead singer. What kind of music? Oh, it was top 40. Gotcha. Dance. Yeah. It was top 40 covers mm -hmm. or whatever. And while I was studying at the university, my professors did not want me to sing with the band, you know, outside because of the training. When you sing natural, right, a certain way, you know, like the rock songs and a lot of the top 40 songs, it causes you to sing a way that is not good for your voice. Improper. Exactly. That's the word I'm looking for. And they wanted me to save my voice because... I could possibly lose some of my range. Oh, and they, um, that just honestly, sounds Honestly, so it was right. You think so? Because, it was. Say yeah, for because example. my voice used to be so much better. I okay. used to do triple Cs, and, mm -hmm. and especially when I would sing classical, I used to be all over the place. Right, right. Yeah, but now my voice is not as strong mm -hmm. because of the misuse. The misuse. And sometimes when you're singing on stage and... Um, like the music that I do, sometimes I sing in a way that I'm not supposed to sing, like really strong and powerful, but I don't really support the way I should. It's just a very technical thing. It I is, can't really explain it. You, you know what? But it's, it's, I sing improper a lot of times. I even speak improper sometimes. <laughs> I do. My, my, my vo voice teacher in college used to tell me that I speak too loud, mm -hmm. that I'm supposed to speak very soft to save the voice. Right. And that's how she speaks. Gotcha. And I talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> and oh even my, my laughter, she used to tell me, Trinir, you laugh too loud. You're straining your vocal cords. I'm like, okay. 
Miss Stanford, but I that's the only way I know how to laugh. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, you have to really when you're a um, classical singer, mm-hmm. you have to really be very particular and mm-hmm. very proper. And that just wasn't me. Yeah, yeah, because I'm, <laughs> I'm proper in some ways, but I just like to relax and talk and laugh and just whatever. Yeah, be yourself. Yeah. I, I think there's a very important role that instructors and coaches have to play, but I don't really support the whole idea of like controlling what you do outside yeah. of the classroom. Yeah. And because you got to find your own identity. Yeah. identity or else you're going to somewhat rebel or not be supportive of yeah. that craft yeah. so regardless those choices worked out right yeah <laughs> yeah they just really tried to mold me to go towards the classical because my highs and my voice is really amazing on that side mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't know that um have you recorded any like no classical? but that's my dream oh you still want to one dab day that. you know that that is one thing i really want to do i want to record um, some beautiful jazz pieces. You know what? I and got an idea some, for you. I want to do some arias too. I got an idea for you. How about do all <laughs> the hits, but all in a jazz form? No. <laughs> <laughs> it won't work. It, it, it would never work. No. All night. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't work. Uh, so that kind of developed your confidence obviously when you're it having did, professional and my background discipline my mm-hmm. discipline and even on stage I am still conscious of my breathing and the way I sing mm-hmm. and sometimes I get a little bit you know too loose mm-hmm. but for the most part I'm still conscious of how I'm that's why I can move and dance and do what I do and still put out um, the notes right and still do it strong and still move because I know how to control my breathing yes and that's for my training that's a great uh point to kind of segue into because you have a lot of recording artists especially pop artists that are doing massive shows yeah that can't dance and sing at the same time and they have to either have a really noticeable that's that's not only in the pop that's in in the world that I'm in, in, mm-hmm. in this freestyle genre. Right, right. You see that with a lot of the artists. Yeah. And, you know? But in particular, when they have to do very, very strenuous dance routines yeah. that accompanies it, obviously you can't have yourself doing all these moves and not be out of breath. Yeah. So how do you work around that and still s- sustain legitimate singing versus background on top? Well, because um, I'm just trained that way. I know how to control my voice. Mm -hmm. I know. And um, I'm in shape. You know, I may be a little curvier. You know, I'm I'm curvier than I want to be. You're absolutely. (laughs) I'm I'm a little curvier and I have a little more weight than um, I like to perform. You know, when I'm performing, I prefer to be smaller because I know with my movements, Mm -hmm. it's a little harder. I find that when I'm skinnier, I can move more and I sing better. Mm -hmm. So with the weight, um, it's a little more difficult, but I can still do it. Right. Because I am in shape. Like I can run. I can run miles. And so that's one way I prepare myself for the stage. I run. I do a lot of cardio. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Do you belong to a gym right now? I haven't been lately. I've been okay. a little bit off my game. I gotcha. will admit that. I'll get you hooked up with that. Yeah. <laughs> because we have a sponsor of the network, UFC Fit. So yeah. We'll, I've we'll been, I, I'm a little bit off my game, but because my body is, um, I guess, accustomed to a certain thing, mm-hmm. I can still get on stage and knock it out. Because I still know how to breathe. I can still move. Right. And nobody would know that I am absolutely exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> you played because, off. Yeah, I cover well. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes to the performances, like, obviously, you're a solo artist. But you have dancers. Mm-hmm. How does that work? Do you have dancers in particular cities? Or do you have dancers you travel with? No, I keep the same dancers. Mm-hmm. And they live out in um, California. Mm-hmm. Um so I use the same girls, the same people. I'm actually, I actually have two other dancers in Sacramento. If I want to do four, mm-hmm. um, if I want to, you know, really make the show fantastic, yeah, I'll bring on my other two guys in Sacramento. But for the most part, I have two girls. Um, 
and they they live in California, so they just go everywhere. With nice, me. nice. And we don't have to really, unless I want to do some new choreography. Yeah. We don't really have to get together and rehearse because we already know the routines. We just go over in our heads. Yeah. Watch the video. You know, right before the show, like the day before, I'll look at my steps and like, okay, it, it just comes back to me. It's just I remember everything. <laughs> yeah, you're you're the performer, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we have freestyle queen in my book, oh. Trinier, in the house. Uh, yeah, when it comes down to the performances, it's something that just comes second nature, obviously, yes. because that's been your main focal point uh, as far as your career has gone. Uh, Today, yeah. uh, as far as like new music, is that something that you want to dab? I, you before mentioned the whole like trying to get into jazz and developing that genre. Is there a part of you that still wants to put out dance and freestyle music? I don't have that itch now. I'm, I'm not. I'm just not interested. I haven't had that interest in a long time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And maybe it's because I'm not really in- inspired that much you mm-hmm. know by what I hear mm-hmm. around me I'm not that motivated to do anything mm-hmm. now I do love um if if I were to do it it wouldn't be it would just be different <laughs> <laughs> when you say different I don't want to get people upset because so many people want me to do um freestyle I'll be all, yeah. slash dance music yeah. right and I'm I'm always you know asked about it, and I'm like I, I, I'm just not feeling it. I'm, I just don't. Yeah. But I'm starting to to maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Do you listen? Like to- I love Dua Lipa. I was gonna bring her if up. If I had a choice mm-hmm. to today, if if I had some producers that would come and say, listen, um, do you want to do something? And if they said that they can give me something like on that level, because mm-hmm. I want to, I want to go to a whole nother level. Of I don't want to do the same. You thing don't want to do. I'll again. be all you ever I'm like need on the is... second half of my life. Yeah, I want to do something different. I agree. You know, and I want to go to a, a different level. And I believe Dua is a whole nother level. I want to do the whole European thing. Yeah, they know my music in Europe, in Germany, Brazil. They know my music everywhere, New Zealand, the Netherlands. But I want to go over there with that like festival type of music. Right. The EDM sound. But put a little still, I can put a Trenere flair on it. Yes. You know? And I still love like the, the Miami Bay stuff. I love... Megan the Stallion. I I love all that. Yeah, yeah. You give me some good beats. I love it. Yeah. You know, I love absolutely love 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 Doja Cat. Mm-hmm. You're hitting, like you're on hitting my all playlist the points. is Doja Cat, Dua Lipa. That's who I listen to. Those are the and ones. If I can't go to that level Vibe, yeah. or to that um, area, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't want to do it. I feel you with my influence on it, my touch. Yes. If there's a way to merge it. Of to course. still make um, my fans happy, mm-hmm. you know? So I'm like, yeah, I can do it, but I need to bring it to 2022. Exactly, exactly. You know, and it needs to be on a whole, and all my ducks have to be in, in place. Mm-hmm. I just can't throw it out and say, oh, available on all digital platforms. Okay, whoop de do. Yeah. What is it really doing? You're not impressing me by saying that. Is it really selling? Are people really buying it? Mm-hmm. No. I miss the, da- <laughs> I miss the days. I miss the days. I miss the days of CDs and records, don't I you? I do, too. Golly, because you have something tangible. You have the artwork. You yeah. have the credits. You have the thank yous. Now it's And you're like, not getting ripped off by the Spotify's and all this other stuff. And mm-hmm. I mean, in order to make some money, and so many people are impressed that, okay, these artists, they're putting out mon- music. But what are you really reaping from it? Because in order to get a regular... And I'm talking about money. Now, if mm-hmm. you don't want to make money and you just want to spin your wheels, mm-hmm. knock yourself out. Right, right. But that's not where I am. Not in this stage, stage of my life. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You and I both. If I'm going to put my effort and my time and my energy and my talents into something, there has to be some other type of reward for me, right? right. So in order now, the way the, the system is set up with these streams and everything, for you to make just like an average pay, 
if you work a nine to five, you got to sell, you have to do like over a million and something streams. I agree. To even make a decent Hello? amount. I think it's just such a ripoff of the artists. And some of the new artists get so excited. Oh, unless you got your IG game up and doing stuff the way these uh, new rappers mm -hmm. like the the Cardi B's or whatever, mm -hmm. there is a whole new system to that thing. You got it. And honestly, I'm not ready for that. So why would I waste my time and spend my wheels on being creative and putting this creativity out if everything is not going to come together for me for real? Not just talking and saying, oh, we on all these platforms and we doing this, we do. But what, you, you're making some money. Who's making the money? Spotify's making the money. The, the majority. Who, yeah. Who's making the money from it? Yeah. What, what is the real reward? Thank Do you. they know you where they will put, um, okay, so people want to get on the radios. Okay, so you get on the radios. But with what genre? Like, where are you going to, where are you directed? Yeah, your where placement. Where are you going? You get on a couple of radios that used to play freestyle. There's plenty of radios that still play freestyle. And thank God that they know um, artists like myself, the Sweet Sensations, the Sapphires, the... Um, cover girls we already have a reputation with them right mm -hmm. so if i were to put out a song they would love to play my music easy they would love to get a record because we've already established that relationship right and it's been over 30 something years for me 37 right so when i hear you know everybody's so excited because they're on one station or two stations, okay that's cool okay and then but the way the system is set up it is not set up for the artist to win. I just don't think so. It's just not. You got all these platforms. They're taking most of the money. You got to sell over a million and something or get a million and something stream just to make a good little buck. And you are absolutely correct. You Remember the song Happy by Pharrell? Yeah. Because I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Clap how, along. Ma how many millions of streams he got? And he made a post saying he only made $2,000 off That's of right. that. That's right. That's insane. Neo talks about it. All the big artists that write, and he writes. Uh, Usher talks about it. Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift talks about it. Right. And, it, it's, it's, and Prince actually was on it too when he was alive. Yes. You know, talking about these companies, how they rip up. I'm just not interested in the way the business of the music industry is set up. Exactly. You know, because if I'm going to go in the studio and at, especially at 57, I'm going to put my whole heart in and I'm going to do everything I can. You got to be kidding um, me. To, you, really? I just want to be, I want to reap some rewards <laughs> at this stage <laughs> of my life, you know, <laughs> real rewards, oh my not goodness. just talk and not just flyers and posts saying, you know, when we're doing this, are we going to release this? But okay, that's all cute. I can do a flyer too and mm -hmm. say I'm releasing yeah. and I could record with Tony if I wanted to tomorrow. I could pick up the phone. He's my son's father. Yeah. But the business, I'm not interested. I'm not happy about the business of the music. Just music. I'm just not. And you, you are hitting all the points exactly because you look at like Rihanna and Kanye, Beyonce, they're not making their millions and becoming billionaires based on music. No, nope. it's all other proprietary things other that they're getting to. businesses that they're Perfumes, investing in, yeah. Clothing lines, stuff like that. Yeah. So they're using the music as a vehicle to get them noticed. That yeah. way they could break those doors. Yeah. So I think that's the way of the artist today is being able to utilize those tools yeah. to go ahead and have those doors open for yeah. bigger opportunities. So you hit it right on the dot there, Chanel. Yeah. Big yeah. time. And yeah. I think that's part of the reason why you're here in Vegas to, to find some... <laughs> There's other some business other things that yeah. I'm, I'm working on, yeah, and and I love what I'm doing, and I'm good. You know, people say, well, why don't you remix this? Or re For me, if a song is a classic and it is already bomb, yeah, yeah. and it has lasted 37 years, mm -hmm. I don't need to remake I don't need to remake it. Right, I don't right. need to go in the studio. My fans come to see me mm -hmm. for what I've already created exactly for what's already out there they still they still love us they still support us you still see the thousands of people yeah. at the shows and it's off of old school classics 
People go see Earth, Wind, and Fire for the classics. Exactly. You know, exactly. They, we're classic artists. All, and I'm speaking for all of the legends of freestyle. Right. You know, I'm speaking for them. We're we're good. Right, right. You know, we don't have to make new music if we don't want to. It's good if we do, but exactly, if you don't exactly. want to, you don't have to. Exactly. And let's kind of uh, kind of gear that towards Stevie B. Yeah. Because when he came here in studio to do his interview, he was actually promoting his new album. Yeah. And he's yeah. been doing that consistently for the past several years where he would just come together with some new producers with a different sound yeah. and kind of make an updated feel to what he feels his material has to be. Yeah. And it's not like doing Spring Love again. It's no. brand new stuff. Yeah. But when he goes and does the concerts, what does he do? Yeah, he because does that's the, what the fans want. Exactly. Now, uh, leaning towards that, is that part of the reason why new music is, isn't really appealing? Because regardless, if you make new music, they're still going to want to hear All Night, I'll Be yeah. All You Ever Need. Talk yeah. about that. It's true. And and I don't blame them. Um it's is it's good music. It you is. Know? It's classic music. But it just it, I, I just don't know. It, you just have your fan base. They just want to hear what they experienced because our music was about uh, love, relationships, and our music takes people back to those good days. Mm -hmm. So they want that feeling. That's what they want to hear. And I'm the same way. If I was to go to an Earth, Wind & Fire concert mm -hmm. or Anita Baker, I don't want to hear her new stuff. I want to hear Angel. I want to hear Reasons. Yes, yes. So our fans are the same way. They're mm -hmm. the same way. And I'm good with it. I'm like, okay good because i don't like the way the music business is anyway so <laughs> right 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 and but also you want to have like a chance to create new fans yes so you had talked about that uh in terms of being able to reach out to younger fans how do you feel that that approach is the best in terms of being able to do that being able to say hey listen to the older stuff but there's still some like current feel that you could connect yourself with uh, yeah, the feel that I would connect myself with. I, I love, like I said, um, the Dua Lipa uh, yes. grooves. Oh, I love it. I love that. I love and the Doja Cat. Mm -hmm. That, to me, would capture new, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then still put Trinere on it. Because when I sing, when I record, my voice still sounds very young. It's... And they, if, they would never know my age. Mm -hmm. if the, They would just never know. Mm -hmm. And I think that I would still appeal to a younger audience, right? Yeah. But I'm I'm not gonna do anything unless I really, um, if everything is lined up, mm -hmm. and if I record like the jazz stuff I told you about, I just want to do some beautiful classics and do it um, R and B smooth or uh, jazz because there's some other things that my voice can do. Right. And I just want to do that for me. Yeah. You know, yep. if it doesn't sell, I don't care. But before I die, those are just things that I personally want to get out of my system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And say, I did it. It's my passion. Exactly. Belief. This is what I did because I wanted to do it. Not because, you know, these people wanted me to do that. It's something that was in my heart to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I am, I'm going to back up. I am going to, I have agreed to record with a very dear friend of mine. And um, I don't want to mention her name. Because we don't want to really put it totally out there yet, mm -hmm. but it is something we're working on. And it's going to be beautiful, and um, but it's something that she and I talked about years ago, and you know I just want to do something with okay. my friend. So <laughs> <laughs> now, is your friend like really known? <laughs> is she what? Is she really known? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's a, an amazing artist in the freestyle. Um, dance genre gotcha gotcha and you're so narrowing we are it gonna down do some things together and it's going to be amazing and i'm just doing that for me and for her okay you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. it's just a, a it's something new it's a good project it's going to be fun mm -hmm. and you know i'm not looking to like make all this money off of that it's just something that's i want to do a duet yeah Ooh, yeah I and, wait and for she's that. she's like really pretty much the only person that I would do it with. Gotcha. So when she asked, I said, absolutely, because you're my friend, you're my girl. We got this. Let's do this. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen. And it's her project. So it's not, I mean, of course, it'll be part of mine, too, because I'm putting my voice on on her project. Yeah. Um, 
so we would, I guess, share in that. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm just, I'm doing it for her. Gotcha. So it's going to be Trainier and such and such. Well, no, it's going to be a group. The other person and oh, okay. Because I'm doing it for her. Got it. It's for her project. Perfect. So like it. But it's going to be. Ooh, it's going to be hot. Oh, I could already <laughs> sense the fire come together with that. Now, uh, you were just in SAC doing a performance there. In L.A. Uh, in L.A. Oh, gosh, you, you, how many shows are you doing a month minimum? Um, I try to fill up my weekends. Mm-hmm. So I would say maybe six, maybe <sighs> four. That Maybe is, four. That is keeping it busy, four or girl. Four six. I try. I give. I try to that. do at least four a month. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, my. That's always my goal. My four. I'm good. Uh, and the main promoter promoter you work with, I believe, is a uh, Alan Beck, correct? Yeah. And he has been a godsend for a lot, a lot of, of artists. artists. Yeah. Ooh, because yes. he's been uh, the driving force for these freestyle explosions and old school concerts. Very consistent. Yes. Yes. And for now years. that. Now that we're coming out of the pandemic, things are starting to roll again. Yeah. Now, uh, getting back to the concert, uh, was there anything different from this concert that you feel st- stood out from previous ones? Or are they pretty much, you go there, you do the, the routine, mm-hmm. and then you go. Uh, anything from the SAC or, or L.A.? That's different no, since I, we're post-pandemic? I, um, nothing really. The only thing, this these last two shows, I was a little upset, though. <laughs> Vent away. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because, you know, I had a, in my mind how I wanted the shows to go. Uh-huh. I always do. I always prepare myself. I always, uh, you know, get my outfits together. They're usually custom made. Mm-hmm. And I have a vision in my mind of how I want things to go. And so, like, at the last minute, the day of, uh, one of my dancers got sick mm-hmm. and could not come. L.A. or SAC? Both shows. But the first one was L.A. Okay. And I was so, I was very disappointed. I was so upset. I'm like, no. Of course, I can handle the stage on my own, mm-hmm. right? And my other dancer, she, you know, she held her own. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I have my DJ. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you have that vision, how you want things to go, you know, and it doesn't happen that way, you get totally disappointed. So, we made it happen. It right. turned out beautiful, the shows. Um, but, yeah, in my head, I was a little disappointed. So that was something that was going on behind the scenes <laughs> that people didn't know. Just a few people knew. like, oh. But the crowd knew because when they saw my dancer, Syrian, go out, mm-hmm. they know that there's another girl, Alex, but they didn't see Alex. Right, right. So when they saw Syrian come out, everybody was like, ah, you know, all excited. And then I came out still excited, right? Mm-hmm. But I think they expected, okay, the show is a little different. I know they did, but right, right. I still, I still came. Now is, I still gave everything. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> On your part, you could control what you could control. Now, right. when there is a dancer missing, is there a plan B where she positions herself to be centered more, or they just yeah, go well, about we it? Yeah, we just pretty much wing it. Okay. Yeah, so it'd be like just like would, if she was there. Yeah, yeah. I told her, I said, you know, Siri, you go out and do your thing. You solo in the beginning. Mm-hmm. We just made, you know, I would just make small changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha, And I gotcha. was like, instead, at the end, you know, you just come out and solo with me instead of with her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had to figure out a way to make it work. Gotcha, you know? gotcha. But so, we're both professionals, and so is she. She's a choreographer. She's a professor. Yeah. You know, she teaches. So um, she's like... A one. Exactly. So I could depend on her to always be there. Now, sick or not sick, she's gonna Syrian will be there. <laughs> did you ever have backup dancers for them like in, in the past? Oh yeah. That you could just call up and say, Hey, so and so sick, can you make it? I used to. Mm-hmm. And that's where I dropped the ball on myself with this. Even though I was talking to Syrian about getting we need extra because I do have the extra people in Sacramento. The male right? dancers, right? Right. But I didn't have them for LA. Gotcha. And I didn't give them enough time to say, listen, this is the choreography yeah. we're gonna do. Because yeah. literally I was told that day. It's tough. So I couldn't make the changes. Had I known maybe two days, mm-hmm. I could have called those guys in SAC and say, listen. And send them a video mm-hmm. because they're that good and they would learn everything. On the flight and going we would over. do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's... But I didn't want to put them on the spot that day and just come yeah. just come and wing it. It would have been amazing mm-hmm. winging it too, but mm-hmm. I just didn't want to take that route. Right, so. right. 
Well, because we'll kill it. Yeah, because your presentation is what you want. Yeah. And I could tell you're somewhat of a perfectionist. Yeah. When it comes I down plan to the stuff, I'm, I have it in my head. And then when someone calls you and says it's not going to be, oh, I was so mad. I'm sure. Ooh, uh, <laughs> I was a livid. Yeah. Well, I think at this point. I had to pray later on because yeah. I was like, Mm-mm, you, not on this day <laughs> in L.A. too. I don't think so. <laughs> I was so mad. Hey, there's some things you can't control. I and, know. And you just work through it. And- I was I was trying to have that, you know. But later, you know, I was okay with it. But in that moment, I was not. I was like, <laughs> you're uh, furious. You perform for 10 minutes and then go get in the bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, and that's the thing. Sometimes you look at it to where, yeah, it's only X amount of minutes that you have to fight through. And yes. then you're done. It's not like you're doing a whole hour or two like Bruno no, Mars or someone. Exactly. And I, yeah, that's what I was going through in my head. I'm right, like, right. On. Yeah. But, you know, everybody, everybody's different. Exactly, you know, exactly. Everybody's different and they handle sicknesses or different things. And so I have to be mindful of that. Mm, patient. And that's what I've been working on, being more patient, mm. be more understanding. But <laughs> it seems but like- when you've been waiting for like one of the biggest shows of the year, yeah, and this was at the new YouTube theater, mm-hmm. I was stoked for that. I was prepared. I spent, you know, I had my, my custom designer, you know, make our outfits, my outfit. I was ready. Mm-hmm. And then to get that, I'm like, she's what now? Sit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh what? My- but it's all good. It's all good. We it's still all. handled everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. Again, you could only control what you could control. Yeah. And you did yeah. your very best. And I'm sure the show turned out phenomenal. It did. It uh, did. Hey, what else? Can for you... me, it was a, on a scale of one to ten. Other people thought it was a ten, but for me, it was an eight. Mm-hmm. And I don't like eights. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, we're, honey. We're, I, I like tens. For me, it was an eight. Oh, trust me, I'm like that with my production. <laughs> Sometimes I'll listen to it and say, "Oh my God, what was I thinking?" But then every everyone says, "Oh, the music's fine. The production's fine. The mix down was fine." I go, "Well, I could hear something." Yeah. And I'm sure you could relate to that. Yeah. Now, uh, let's let's get into that since we could get a little technical and detailed because yeah. we're both professionals. Are there any particular tracks that you know for a fact that there's a part in it that you could have done better or it was something oh, that all was all of them. All the tracks. <laughs> is there any one that's like stands out? Like someone will play, like they're playing our song on this part. It was supposed to be this, but it's that, but you guys don't recognize it was a mistake. That's yeah. thing. I would say, um, how can we be wrong? Okay. Dun, dun, how dun, can, nah, nah. Yeah. How can we be wrong? There was some parts in there that I wanted to do over. Mm-hmm. I didn't get a chance to do over. So now when I hear, it's like every time I do that song, it's, it's like there's some parts that I just don't like doing. Okay. Because I'm like, man, I could have, I, I was supposed to ad lib on this part or do, I just wasn't totally happy with the final production of that right right was it because it was rushed or what was no because there's one part in there i didn't want to do falsetto falsetto Mm -hmm. yeah 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 but he had me do that and i was like i don't like transitioning my voice from natural to falsetto i want to sound strong there yeah he didn't want to change the key Mm -hmm. he didn't want to do you know make the adjustments because we already like did most of the song Mm -hmm. right but that particular part was giving me trouble and I didn't like the place of, mm-hmm. you know, where that part was in my voice. Mm-hmm. And I which, just never got a chance to do it. Which part of uh, How Can We it's, Be Wrong? Is it How Can We? Yeah, oh, that how part. How Can We Both Be Wrong? Yeah, that, that part. Yeah, where you go in falsetto and yeah. you feel that that's kind of out of place. Because yeah. I had to switch from my natural to falsetto. Yes. And when you go, I don't want to sing it, but <laughs> no, 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 no. You do whatever you want. I just know that it was a place in my voice that I just didn't, I didn't like it. So gotcha. Because I had gotcha. to do too many. I had to switch. I, I like to just. I'm with you. Do straight natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's some parts where I had to sing falsetto where I feel I'm not as strong. Gotcha. I don't sound as strong mm-hmm. on the recording. 
So, um, but he didn't, we didn't change it. And I was really mad about that. <laughs> well, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, trust me, as a producer, I know what the needs and wants of singers and, and artists. And you kind of have to gear towards that. And if it's not comfortable, yeah, you, you got to make it comfortable. Yeah. I guess Tony was just steadfast. Yeah, especially like he could, the part where go, if what you tell me you feel. I didn't like real. that part. You don't like real. it? Yeah. Because I was... What? I was half and half. I was yeah. a little bit natural and a little bit of falsetto. Mm-hmm. And it, to me, I did, don't sound strong on that part. Right, right. So now when I sing it live, mm-hmm. I try to push to make myself sound the way I want it to sound on the recording. Got it. I got try to it. make up for it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, th- this is before all the pitch correction days yeah. and oh, yeah. auto-tune. Yeah, you better know how to sing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the gift that Tony had also, he didn't do it on my songs, but he's done it on other songs. Mm-hmm. He he was a master at making you sound good, even if you couldn't sing. <laughs> Thank God I could sing. Yeah, Hello. exactly. Exactly. But um, he was he was a genius. Oh, uh, there's there's a lot of people in the chat right now. They're just saying that. Pretty Tony is who he is. Yeah. And it, that's my baby daddy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny how that connects, right? Uh, and I, you know what? He actually hit me up during the pandemic and uh, we wanted to connect, but we never like solidified that. Yeah. Then you, <clears throat> then you came into the picture, excuse me. And look how it's worked out. Yeah. So, it's um, working out. Uh, yeah, as far as uh, the whole types of music and what you feel could have been done better yeah uh we all have that so yeah. it doesn't surprise me in terms of how that worked out now you went from what was it jam pack to other labels how I don't did remember that remember them all either <laughs> right right was it because uh the evolution of the music was happening because now you started getting away from the jam pack days into the Luke Skywalker and pandas. All and that, stuff. to be honest with you, all of those switcheroos mm-hmm. was Tony's doing. Gotcha. For whatever reason, business wise, uh, money dealings, mm-hmm, or whatever, mm-hmm. he made all those moves. Right. And I kind of just followed him mm-hmm. on that. I kind of listened to him. I let him handle the business aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And because back then I didn't know nothing about labels and the business and we need to go with this. We need to change. I didn't know anything. I just knew how to sing. Mm-hmm. And um, that's where I made my mistake because I should have. I just should have been a little more proactive um, in handling my own business. Mm-hmm. But I was 19. And it was my first time in the music business, really, even though I had been singing with bands and, you know, doing other things musically. Right. right. But in the recording business, right. it was a whole different ball game. Yes, it I is. I didn't know anything. You know, I just knew how to sing. And I felt like he knew. And so I let him decide, OK, we're going to go here. You know, because I always felt if we went to this company, it's, it's for a better purpose. It's going to be better. Right, right. You know, they're going to help us. They're going to, they're able to do some things for us that we probably can't do with just the label or with the company on our own. Mm-hmm. So I always just had that trust exactly. that he was making those right decisions. Now, in hindsight, did he make all the right decisions no. in your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> well, because... Now, now that you could really, and really he knows put, that. Yeah, I know he's probably watching or listening, or he may listen. He knows, you know, you may messed up some things, Tony, you know but it's I'll all be, good. The music yeah, was excellent. I'll be honest <laughs> with you, I was in that same position as well, and I was still learning as we go. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure, pretty Tony, he put on that like I got everything handled, but he's just surfing along yeah. and figuring yeah. it out. Yeah. So it's all good. And I think the thing too, what kind of messed him up or us up. Is because we tried to do, we wanted to do everything on our own. Yeah. We didn't want, because I had major labels coming for me left and right. Mm-hmm. And yeah, how did, that's how, one thing I do regret. We did not, um, we didn't jump on that. Now, what, at this point, can you mention which labels were after you guys? Atlantic okay. was definitely one. Mm-hmm. Epic was another. Mm-hmm. And so. Ooh, um, Epic. Yeah, I have, I have I have major regrets, trust me. Yeah. But 
No, I'm going to take that back. I don't have because everything happens for happened a the way it's supposed it to be. I'm supposed to be right here in this moment. Thank you. So everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. But um, looking back, there's some decisions I should have made differently. Or at least had a voice in. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was there was times when I could have, you know, gone with this record label and looking back, maybe I should have, mm-hmm. but I didn't. And it is what it is. It is. Trust <laughs> me. I mean, there's so many projects that I've done, and I just said to myself, if we would have just committed to an album, yeah, I'd have an island by now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But and a lot it didn't of people, happen. And coming out of Miami, a lot of people didn't know, like, um, that was back with the Miami Sound Machine days, too, right? Mm-hmm. And Gloria the, and the Miami Sound Machine mm-hmm. actually opened up for me on a couple of shows on crazy? the beach. Is that crazy? What? And that's when I had All Night out. Mm-hmm. It was huge, mm-hmm. okay, in Miami. And next thing you know, they recorded... Um, Conga, yeah, Da-da-da. they got that deal, yeah, and it was a wrap. She took off, and the rest is history. And so, you know, I go in my head because we used to get the same type of um, offers, yeah, and we didn't accept them because now you know we had that new comp, we had our own thing going, and we just wanted to be that big independent. Right, right. We wanted to do our own thing. We made our own. We we had a pressing plant. Mm-hmm. We used to press up our own records. Yeah. I used to package them for the record pools, DJ pools. Is that you know? crazy, ladies and gentlemen? And you know we 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 had the money, and that's the reason why, if you really research, I have lots of songs Mm -hmm. a lot yeah because we didn't have to answer to the majors we didn't have to answer to them and 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 they didn't tell us um when to do a record or if we could do a record Mm -hmm. or if they had the money we recorded anytime we wanted if we wanted to record every day and put a record out every week or every month you could do it we could do it Mm -hmm. and that's why you see all the songs that i had we put them out left and right left and right Mm -hmm. by the time what 1986 i had i'll be all you ever need they're playing our song how can we be wrong all night i had all those in two years okay and that's because of the freedom and the liberty of that independent gosh so i didn't want to we didn't feel like we needed to go to because we wanted to run this train we wanted to be this major independent down in miami you know we wanted to represent our own thing Mm -hmm. and you know things happened (laughs) they always do but you keep striving you keep continuing and it is what it is and i think it's important that everyone realizes that your pathway god is always going to make it right for you yeah Uh, It's not going to be exactly what you want, but it's going to be right. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's your path uh, has been truly amazing. Uh, Gosh, I mean, being able to still go uh, at this time in your life consistent with all these events. Golly. Uh, Let's chime on that because I know you do a few cruises here and there. I don't like cruises too much. I don't. (laughs) Talk about that. How are cruises when it comes to these? Uh, ah, they're these perf- stressful. Okay, talk. Now about I do that. love the ocean. I don't have a thing mm-hmm. about ships. You know, I'm not seasick or anything. And I don't get seasick and, mm-hmm. and all of that. Um, is it because when you go eat, they're like, "Oh, can you sign this?" And have a <laughs> right, or is it that because well, oh, that's Trinity over I there, love, that's George Let me Lamont. tell you, and my fans know I love them. I go all out of my way to do meet and greets. Yeah, I never say no to a picture. I never say no to an autograph, especially when the DJs come up to me with their albums. I'm always. I never turn down meet and greets. Gotcha. So gotcha. It's just a lot of stress because you're you're on that ship for three days. So, for me. Because I know how I am mm-hmm. with my fans. Mm-hmm. I cannot say no. Yeah, yeah. I can't say no. Give me a minute. Yeah. No, I'm eating. I, I can never say no to them. I just can't. You're like, I'm going to sneak up to this midnight buffet and be by myself. No, but no. Or have a drink. You cannot do it. So really for 24-7, for those three days, I am working. Mm-hmm. I'm mentally working. Yeah. I am always on my guard. Because yeah. I'm, I'm not that artist that would, you know... Uh, 
like just get drunk and get loose mm-hmm. on the ship. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do that. Right, right. You know, so I have to be on my P's and Q's and I have to, you know, stay in that artist mode, yeah. you know, and, you know, there's things that I've, I've done throughout the years to keep up a certain rep or image. Yes. And so when you're there 24 seven, you got to stay on it. You know, and it, is it so kind of, it's like work and it's like, and it's oh, kind of I'm stressful so because you'll be <laughs> in your cabin and you're like, I got to go eat. But should I just like cover myself or put yeah, on my makeup? Just wear some, yeah. Because you know, can someone's going to go take with a picture. the bun in my head and just put on some flip flops. <laughs> yeah. I can't do that. Yeah. I, not me. Yeah. Other people can do it. Mm-hmm. But me, just the way that I am, I cannot do that. I have to always be on point. Yes. And sometimes always being on point is a little stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Now, as far as the cruises and the other artists that are involved, any any crazy stories that... Not really. <laughs> no crazy stories. No. Gotcha. Everyone's on their best behavior to the, for the most part. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. It's... Well, actually, honestly... There's certain, there's different levels of the freestyle artists, Mm -hmm. okay? There's different, and I would say, for the most part, the artists that I travel with or do most of my shows with Mm -hmm. on the West Coast, there's just a different style. There's a different uh, rapport. Mm -hmm. There's a different... um, we just know how to work well together. We all gel really well. There's no drama. There's right, no right. fighting with us. There's no um, just crazy stuff. Right, we right. just have a different level of respect for each other. We work well together. So you're, it's not always that way with with East a Coast. lot of the groups. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, because you said specifically West Coast. Now, West Coast, w- what artists are we talking about? Like Stevie B or... Uh, yeah, because we basically... Well, honestly, it's just kind of like me, Stevie B, Expose, Mm -hmm. Lisa, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Even though Lisa is East East Coast, Coast. and I am too. I'm from Florida. Yes, you are. But most of our work is on the West Coast. Yeah. Figure that. Most of it is on the West because California has always uh, supported our music since the 80s. Always. The radio stations have always pumped our music. I mean, K-Day... Um, Greg Whoa, Mack will tell you, wow. K-Day California used to bring me out all the time. Mm-hmm. And I wish I had moved to California many, many years ago and I just didn't do it. I wish I had, but, um, it's okay. yeah, California, since the beginning of my career, I was always flying back and forth, mm-hmm. Fresno, Sacramento, San Diego, LA. That was actually the first place I met and did a show with Lisa Lisa in LA. Gotcha. That was back in the eighties. And, um, yeah, I consider, yeah, we're, I consider us West Coast, even though the East Coast raised us. Because mm-hmm. Stevie is from Miami as well. That's right. Expose is from Miami. Great artist. We're from Miami. Yeah. But we get, I think, we get the strongest love from Cali. We just do. Got to give an applause for Cali. because. <laughs> Born and raised in the, from the Bay Area. And, and I, now I, here I in Vegas. honestly, I even made that comment at the show in LA. Mm-hmm. I said, um, Miami raised me. They did. Made me who I am. But California saved me. Ooh, that's deep. It is deep. Because I thought about it myself. I said, you know what? Oh, I'm about to cry right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm making Trenere cry on her own. <laughs> Because Cali, oh, I'm gonna cry. It's oh okay. My God. Let, it, let it be. California let it be. has been amazing to me. I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for the fan base showing up at these shows, mm-hmm. uh, the promoters putting on these shows, and the people showing up year after year after year. It's been 37 years. Now I did drop out for like 14 years. People don't know that. In '92, I got out of the business, and for 14 years to raised my son. Mm-hmm. I got in the ministry, mm-hmm. but I came back after that. I came back in, in 2005. Mm-hmm. And you know who brought me back? Alan Beck. Alan Beck and Stevie B. Mm-hmm. And Amanda Tilk. I've been with my agent since the 80s. Amanda Tilk. She's amazing. Same one. So I was in the ministry for like 14 years. i left in 92. My son was three years old. And it was after I did all these tours in Brazil. 
Mm-hmm. I was there for like three months. I did like over 30 shows. And so I had this experience, this spiritual experience before I went. And I promised God when I come back after these shows, God, I'm giving it all to you. And so I went into the ministry. Didn't want to do any more uh, secular music. So I was going down a different path, and it was really for my son. I wanted to raise my son a certain way. I didn't want to be in the music business. I wanted to raise him purely. I wanted him. I wanted to give everything as a mom to my son, and I did that. And so got married, divorced. He went through high school. I'm, I'm still not in the music. I'm still not doing shows. But this entire time, Alan Beck and Stevie kept calling me. With the man, hey, Trenere, yeah. Alan Beck, this promoter, Alan Beck, he has these shows going on. And that's how she talks. That's why I'm making that sound. <laughs> <laughs> she has this high-pitched voice. Anyway, they would call me all the time, and I'm like, no, I'm still in it with God. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm just not ready. I'm not ready to do that again, mm-hmm. to step back at, you know, into that. And my son is in school. I want to wait till he's done, blah, blah, blah. Stevie kept on me. He kept calling me, Trenere, we got these shows. Come on, girl. Jesus ain't going to be mad. I'll never forget. He said that. Jesus ain't going to be mad at you, girl. <laughs> Sounds like Stevie. Like, Stevie, I'm not ready yet. Okay. But it was one day in uh, 2005 they called, and it was the right day. Alan Beck called. Steve, well, Stevie called first for Alan. And then they called and said, we got to get you. I said, okay, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Stevie was shocked. He said, what, what, what did you just say? <laughs> did, you, did you say yes? I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. That's and awesome. So, yeah. So Alan's been there since 2005. Yeah. He was the one responsible for getting me back in the scene and mm-hmm. getting me back out there, mm-hmm. you know. And let me tell you, I hit the stage after 14 years, and it felt like I had never left. The fan base was there, and it was a wrap since then. And we've been rock and rolling ever since. That's why I still have a special. I have a special place in my heart for Stevie. Yeah. A lot of people, some people hate him, some people love him. I don't mm-hmm. care. Mm-hmm. That's my dude. Me yeah. and him fight oh. too, oh. like brothers and sister. Let me right, tell right. you, me and him, I get on the phone and vent with him. <laughs> God damn it. And this <laughs> happened and that happened. What the fuck? And he's like, Junior, calm down. You need to calm down. Me and him talk. It's beautiful, isn't back it? Back and forth. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I vent and, and cuss him out. Yeah, yeah. And then he'll call me, Um, you okay now? Yeah, you okay, T? Now I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I had to let that out. I call him my freestyle dad because he gives me very good advice. Dad, not, not brother. Trenere. Well, I say he's my dad because sometimes when I need advice, mm-hmm. he will tell it to me straight. Gotcha. He will. He'd be like, listen, now, I know you think you this, that, and the other, but these promoters, they're looking at it from a business point of view. Such and such and such. We have mm-hmm. deep conversations. You oh know? yeah, yeah. And like, he straight. How come I'm not out? headlining over so and so? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, he'll check you on that. Like this he is will. How, yeah. And I appreciate that because you know we have to learn from each other. And I feel like he he knows a little more than me. He's gotcha. a little more experienced. Yeah, yeah. In Just a little areas. bit more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's and I, I can listen. I can listen sometimes to some people. <laughs> to some people that are credible. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching a very exclusive interview, Slam Show interview with the one and only Freestyle Queen. Uh-oh. In you the better house. not say that queen word too loud. You know, <laughs> that word makes a lot of folks upset oh, now. Oh, gosh, gosh. Uh, well, God for, will forgive us. That's for Ooh, sure. Ooh, you said the queen word. Oh, <laughs> Lord, have mercy. So at this time, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and type in any questions you'd like me to relay to our special guest, Trenere, in the house. And uh, please uh, make sure it's something unique, not something redundant that we've uh, talked about. Yeah, something You're- different. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, now, as far as oh, okay. Now they're starting to come in. Uh, you talked about the whole uh, Dua Lipa thing yeah. and being able to enjoy her music. Uh, when it comes down to like being able to go out and watch a performer, is she like on the top of your list? No. Okay. So, <laughs> like right now, we're in Vegas, so we're in the we are in the freaking attraction capital of the world. Who would you? Put? I would just say my favorite, all time favorite artist. I always have watched her, loved her. Sometimes I've tried to imitate her when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I love Janet Jackson. Okay, she's an icon to me. I, I just think that I love everything about her. She's so strong. Mm-hmm. She's very private in a way. 
she's classy. She doesn't have to show all skin to, mm-hmm. to really get the job done, you know. I, I love everything about her and even her personal love life. You know, I like the way she's handled the, you know, her men. Right, right. You know, it might maybe this last uh, husband wasn't great for her or mm-hmm. the, maybe even the first one. But I can relate <laughs> to that because I've been divorced twice. Right. You know, oh, and uh, okay. I just love how she's handled her personal life. She's classy. She's talented. Her music is bomb. I love her outfits. Mm-hmm. I, she's just everything for me. Uh, did you see I that? go crazy over her. I actually scream and I cry at a concert. At Janet Jackson's concert. <laughs> I'm like a little girl. Hey, I love her. She, she is an icon. She is. And uh, yeah, she's one of the very best, if not the best. Yeah. Of all time. I now, think so. Now, as far as like being able to like move into the future, you had talked about the jazz element that you want to go ahead and put together. Is that like the number one thing right now that you're going to focus as well as that duet with the unknown? No, that's not my number one thing. Not right now. Um, I am working on something else Mm -hmm. here that will kind of fall into that. Gotcha. I kind of don't want to give it away, (laughs) but there's something else that I'm working on before that. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I, I don't see doing that and really focusing strongly on that. Uh, maybe for another three years. Okay. Yeah. And that's going to be soon, like like around the time that I'm going to retire. I'll be 60. So I'm looking to do that. That'll be like my last project. But before that, I am doing something else. Gotcha. Gotcha. Sounds good. And, and I'm writing. I'm, I have a few books coming out, too. There you go. So that's that's like the next thing. That's, there you go. So, and I'm, I'm okay with saying that. So there's going to be some amazing books coming out. And something else too. <laughs> that, that's what I plan on doing in the future as well as be able yeah. to author a few books. Do you, do you have books right now or is, is this going to be your first effort? No, these is going to be my first effort. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, that's the way to go because yeah. as we get older, we want to be able to inspire the younger generation yeah. and le- let them know, Hey, you could be better than yeah. us because, yeah, and I want to tell my own, I want to tell my own story too, like as far as like a docu series mm-hmm. that is um, in the works as well. Oh, that would be a good one. Yeah, I want to do my own. I want to tell my own story, my yeah. way. Yeah. And um, without just without a lot of other people chiming in. Yeah, and, influencing and making, you. You know, changing the history or my story. Right. Right. You know, and putting people in the documentary that don't belong. Yeah, exactly. And there's you a know? lot of documentaries that are like that. Like, yeah, you and there's some that's been so-and-so. out that didn't even mention me. And right. it's all good mm-hmm. because I know what I've contributed to the genre. I know what um, what I bring to the table. Yeah. But I'm going to present the meal my way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you, you have to, you'll be able to control that 100%. Exactly, because- and control the money. Mm-hmm. You know, because other people, they want to jump in and tell your story and do this and, and you don't make any money from it. They make everything from your story. Yeah. That's not going to happen on my, over here. It's oh, yeah. Not. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you, I could tell you're not going to take any no. BS from anyone no. at any point. And a lot of times people wait until the artists die mm-hmm. and then they write all this stuff about them. And yeah. it's just then the family's fighting and getting upset. Yeah. You know, like be, I don't want that to happen. Yeah. Because the artists can't defend themselves because they're no yeah. longer around. Yeah. And that's really tough. Then you have the family and the estate getting involved yeah. and it becomes trivial. I mean, yeah. Look at, and I don't want to feel like, um, we don't have, I don't, we don't know if we're going to die next year. I don't know how much time I have. No one does. So it's something I got to get on now. Yeah. Because I don't want to feel like, or my family, I don't want to let my son down. Yeah. You know, I want him to have the story and. Is he doing music? My son does do music, but he is so talented in so many things. Mm -hmm. He's like really into the stock market and he's into a whole lot of stuff. Hey. And he is awesome at it. I'm like, I try to get him back to, because he has so many tracks that I want. So I try to pull him back over. Come on, let's do. But mm-hmm. his mind isn't there. Gotcha. And when, you know, when I do something musically, I want everything to be in the place. I want the creativity to be there. I want the producer to. I just want to be on the same page with him. Yeah. You know, he can't have a vision for him mm-hmm. and think that I'm just going to jump on that. 
Because right. I've had producers do that. Call yeah, me yeah, yeah. On, recently. Call me on the phone and want me to be a part of this project or that project. And so I'll say, okay, what direction are you going in? Mm -hmm. And then they tell me that. And I'll say, you know what? That's not where I'm going. Yes. That's not, I'm not on that page. I'm on a different, and then when I, then they'll say, well, what do you want to do? And I tell them, oh, well, that's not, okay, well, then you're not for me. I'm sure there's others yeah. that will be on your page. I feel like at this age, you got to be on my page. That's yep. just what it is. I'm with you 100%. I'm not, I'm not cutting corners no more. Mm -hmm. I want to do what I want to do because mm -hmm. I'm headed towards 60 and above and I don't have time to play games. I'm I don't you. have time to play games in the studio and on social media and with this artist and I don't have time for it. I just don't. I, I'm focused. Exactly. <laughs> I'm with you. Maybe in our twenties. Yes. We'll say yeah, yes to even everything. Thirties and forties. I yeah. give you that. Yeah. But once you get into that 50 yeah. thing, you need to be on a certain mindset and level. Yeah. You know, you're entering the second stage. Like for me, if I could drop everything right now and just travel the world, mm -hmm. that's my first passion. That's like my deepest passion right now. That's what I want to do. I want to travel, travel, travel. And, he, and I am going to Greece actually ooh. in April. So okay. I'm excited. So you got, <laughs> you got Greece. What else is on your bucket list traveling wise? Um, Dubai. Dubai. Okay. And that's going to be maybe uh, around the fall. Okay. And Italy again. Gotcha. I've been to Italy, a, a few cities, but there. I want to go to Tuscany. I want to go to Positano. Mm -hmm. uh, I could talk about that's like that. Just makes me happy. Gotcha. I want to just travel. Gotcha. I really do. Yes. But I got to do some things first, you know. Exactly. But exactly. we can travel in between all that stuff. Oh, right? you could. You could. You deserve it. That's yeah. that's for sure. A lot of people in the chat are just wanting to say thank you for being able to take the opportunity to come hang out here in studio. Okay. Um, my network and community, they're very, very fortunate to, have, to be able to witness greatness here oh! in studio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love you, that word. I use that word a lot because I always tell women to walk in your greatness. Mm -hmm. You're awesome. You're great. Gotcha. You're that queen. I use greatness a lot. I love that word. Now, I have a question for you personally. At one of the versions of I'll Be All You Ever Need, it starts off a cappella. Yeah, I love that version. Okay. Can you just do that part? No. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> oh, God. That's a lot. I would have to stand up and... Okay, okay. Yeah. No, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Especially but, that last I'll yeah. Be All You Need. Oh, my uh, God. Hey. I, I I'll just take did that. that. I just did that in acapella, uh, in, in falsetto. Yes, yes. But Let's... when I recorded that, it was from the gut. Right. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And uh, then when Tony comes in with dum, da, dum, da, oh my god. Yeah. That was the jam. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean, just the way it comes in, then it just drops into the into the beat and everything. He's it, awesome. It's just incredible. Um, yeah. I mean, we just. We're just really enamored with what you're able to do throughout all these years. And again, you had that break that you took for 14 years. Yeah. A lot of people do that because they want to come together with family and yeah. with God and to be refocused. Yeah. And when the time is right yeah. and everything's going to reset and start yeah, over reset, again. Reset, that's the word. Because I knew it was a lot going on in me because I had experienced some things, which I'm going to talk about in the book, but I had to reset. Mm -hmm. Or I would have been dead. Like, and and I, honestly, I have been to that other side. Yeah. I did die but, one time. I had passed away, and, and that's going to be in the book. Mm -hmm. But when I came back to life, I had a whole different mindset. Gotcha. Whole, and I had to, I had to go a different way right. for a minute. And a lot of people don't get that second chance, you know. And so I said, you know what, I got to do this for my son because I want to be around for my baby, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what I did. That's phenomenal. Yeah. I, I really, <laughs> I really admire your effort in in terms of being able to uh, just be an inspiration yeah, for everyone out there because there's a lot of uh, people that just need individuals, professionals that could go ahead and just like say, I want to be like him or her, mm -hmm. despite what they've like how to fight through their dark periods right. because let's just be real. Everyone yeah. has their dark periods. They do. Everyone has fallen so far, but it's just the ability to get back up. Yeah. Some don't come recover. Some don't come back. Whitney Houston is an example, you know, it's just like that could have been me, 
you know, but I made certain decisions and I pressed, you know, forward and I just drew on what my father taught me and I pulled on God, like for real. And I made the steps to make the changes. Gotcha. You know, some people want to do it, but they don't really, you know, make the change. Gotcha. Or make the steps. Make the effort to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's truly hard, but at the same time you put God number one, you're going to yes, be just that's fine. That's right. Uh, Amen. We, we have one of the viewers, Real Niner Empire, asking what was the one most memorable concert you ever had that stands out? Just like, yeah, that's the one, and no matter what, because it's just up there. Actually, the one when I first went to Brazil in 92, because I had no idea that they knew me like that, mm -hmm. that I had a huge fan base like that. So to see the craziness and just, the crowds, you couldn't see. I mean, it just went back so far. And it was like the city was going crazy. They would put up fireworks and, you know, like I'm in town. And then when I would go to the next town, you would see all the fireworks. And it was just an amazing experience, especially the first concert. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God. You know, we had all these cars, um, you know, armed guys armed security because it was dangerous at that time still is and so all of that was exciting to me <laughs> i was like yes we have the, oh my god they have the big guns oh my god so it was it was crazy i felt when i went there i felt like a okay am i a star i think i'm a star <laughs> people are going crazy like oh my god and like the um, beatles yeah that was just it, that was amazing because i didn't know that they loved me like that so far away. Yeah. You know, I get the fan mail. I knew people knew me in, in Germany and uh, the Netherlands, but I had never physically gone there. Mm -hmm. And so to go there and to see it and to feel it and people like crying over you and running behind the cars, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. What? It's truly <laughs> And amazing. I ended up staying there for three months. I started out with, with um, like 15 shows, right? And then as... You know, as the time went by, more shows added. You know, another five. Okay, another promoter would call. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, my God. I ended up staying there for three months and just hitting all the main shows, like the Susha show, um, Faustan show. It was amazing. Truly. It was amazing. Truly. Brazil is it's really special. <laughs> so uh, you haven't been back since? Oh, yeah. Okay. I go uh, back all the time. Oh, okay, 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 cool. Yeah, cool. me and Stevie, we've done many shows together. Um, he does some alone, I do some alone, but mm -hmm. I go all the time. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. And he always has his band with him most of the time, yes. correct? Yeah. Uh, did you ever feel that that was something you would like to incorporate at any point? You know, when I first started, back in the 80s, I did have a band. Mm -hmm. I started out with a band. But then as the show's you know, started rock and roll, you know, rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of clubs. Yeah. And so the clubs didn't require the band. Yeah. Because of space and yeah. Some, yeah. So I had to drop the band because mm -hmm. I wasn't getting enough venues back then to need a band. That's how I wanted to, because that was the lifestyle. That was the, that's what I came from. I was always in a band in college. I used to have a band called Euphoria. So I was a, a, a live music artist. But I had to drop that. And so when I got back into the business, when Alan called me, that's just not what was happening. Yeah. You know, it was tracks. That was the thing to do. Pop in the CD. And push yeah, play. and and the promoters, they, they, back then, they didn't want to pay for all these band members and flights and blah, blah, blah. So we had to make it work. Mm -hmm. And so we did. But if I could do a band now, oh, we'd kill it. Yep. You know, it's, but I'm comfortable. I'm okay. Oh, and you I have do your the band. I'm doing the band thing with that's something else that's going on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Let Stevie handle that. Yeah. Stevie's got that. I would I would love to do that. But um, I'm doing something else that's going to um, I'm going to have a band for that. Gotcha. So but gotcha. that's in the works. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to spill the beans yet. <laughs> oh, you're you're incredible. But you're Stevie's incredible. band is awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We are. If very I familiar. did it, I would do it the way he's doing it. Gotcha. The way they incorporate the 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 tracks with the band, and it's all beautiful and big. Mm -hmm. The sound is 
badass. He's, yeah. Well, he's doing it the perfect way. Exactly. But they all have to connect to because uh, for the most part, he's headlining. So he yeah. has the entire stage to himself to yeah. a certain degree. <laughs> well, so. Lisa has her band now, too. Okay. She travels with her band, too. So it, it works. It works for some venues. Gotcha. But that's not my interest right now to do that. I, I like what I'm doing and in the way we're doing it. It's still effective, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's always a, a great show. Now, uh, as far as hobbies, besides music, what's your, your interest? I love, I, I, oh, I love hiking. I love nature. I love the beach. I love, yeah, I like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I love gotcha. to read. I'm always reading a book. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's my hobby. That's awesome. Yeah, that's I awesome. I like to do that kind of stuff. Right. That, other that is great. I like to do, but I'll just mention those. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, yeah, uh, Trenere, it's been a pleasure. Oh, having you on the that program. That was so quick. It's over. Uh, yeah. You said that. You said it was going to go by really fast. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it. Good. And, I, and you didn't give me any hard questions, so. Yeah, yeah. Good. That's well, why I'm not sweating. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, because I want her to return. <laughs> yeah, we can do part two. And that's when you ask me the hard stuff. This is Man. the first interview where I didn't sweat. Oh, well, I guess. Because they had some questions like, like what? Uh, well, I, I, I think it's the best way is to put ease the. Ease me into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the, the guest has to be comfortable. Yeah. And if you don't make them comfortable, they're, they're going to be sweaty. They're going to feel like yeah. they're not going to be themselves. And I've been doing this ever since 2011. Yes, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. Yeah, I can I'm tell by myself. the way you asked the questions. He's good. Thank you. I like thank that. you. Thank you. I loved it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Trenere, again, uh, it was incredible to have you on. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, uh, what social media handles that people could follow I you think at? most people know on Instagram is Trenere Music. Mm-hmm. And I have two Facebook pages, uh, a musician page, which I don't really personally interact too much, but I do share my stuff over there. But the Trenere V. Farrington, that's the one that mm-hmm. I really correspond with people. Gotcha. On. Yeah. Gotcha. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a real name, Trenere. That is my name. <laughs> it, because a lot of people, they'll say, is that a real name? It, it's your yeah, legitimate that's my birth name. name. I was born, yeah, with that name. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Incredible. So yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, once thank again. Thank you, guys. Yes. Thank you so much for hanging out. And yeah. yeah. I'll be on later on tonight for my regular freestyle in the mix Twitch at 6.30 Pacific time. Join me for that because I'll be playing, obviously, Trenier as yeah. well. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, be sure to follow her. And for uh, the entire network, we'll see you a little bit later. Let the rhythm take you. Let the rhythm take you. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.